Hello and welcome to a Sports Week special looking back at the Basingstoke Bison's 2011-2012 season. get started with the action, sports reporter Michael Connolly went to meet the players and try ice hockey for himself. Win or Sports have come down to the Planet Ice Arena to get up close and personal with the Bayes and Stoke Bison to see how their season's gone so far, learn a bit more about ice hockey and I might even get on the ice myself. I also wanted to find out more about some of the lesser known aspects of the game. A lot of fans seem to enjoy the fights that go on. Yeah. Um, what exactly is it with that? Is, is it allowed? Is it frowned upon? I think, uh, you know, being from a North American background, you know, fighting is part and parcel with, with ice hockey. It's synony synonymous with uh, the sport. As long as nothing's dirty, as long as guys, you know, uh, throw their punches and then when the fight's over, they, you know, they, they go to the box, you know, it, it, it's fine. You know, they're obviously penalized for, uh, for fighting because it is technically not allowed. After looking around the bison changing room, it dawned on me that I had to keep my promise about getting on the ice. So it was time to get kitted up. All right, maybe I exaggerated a little bit about how good I am on the ice. But after an unsteady start and a little bit of coaching, I managed to knock one past the netminder. All right, he probably let it in. But anyway, I spoke to Steve to see what he thought. So Steve, um, I thought I had quite a good game. Do you think there's a chance of me getting on the bench on Sunday? Um, well, you know, I've been involved in hockey for, for a lot of years and seen a lot of players, a lot of good ones, a lot of bad ones. And uh, you look good. Uh, you know, you looked very, very good in the Bison jersey. And uh, the only problem was when you stepped on the ice. Um, but other than that, uh, you're, you're exceptional. Oh well, I think I'll just have to stick to watching the game instead of playing it. Basingstoke started their season in September with a positive win over Bracknell, but then narrowly losing against Guildwood. October didn't begin well for Basingstoke, with defeats come against Bracknell, Slough and Sheffield. They did manage to get an impressive 7-2 win against Telford, but this form didn't last. They only got two wins in the remaining six games in October. They made it 3-1, and then Miller completed the second period route with Basingstoke's fifth. And then Chong got Basingstoke's sixth, and Dubeck added a seventh. In a very intense game, with a lot of hard hitting, Wiggins got taken off the ice after this brawl with Telford's number 20. In November, the Bison began to get their season on track, with wins over Petersburg, Guildford, Telford and, impressively, scoring seven goals in their games against Slough and Swindon. They managed to stretch out a six-game unbeaten run, which came to an end with three losses at the end of the month against Manchester, Bracknell and Milton Keynes. And into the final last minute, with an extra man attacking on the ice for the Bison, all hope was lost when Faith skated through to get the fifth goal. The game ending 5-2 to Manchester Phoenix. December didn't bring much joy for the Bison, beginning in the month with a loss against Telford on penalties. They did temporarily improve their form to get a win over Manchester, but after two more losses against Sheffield and Petersburg, it looked like it was going to be a disappointing end to the year. Until, impressive 6-1 and 5-2 victories over Swindon and Guildford ended the year on a high. Joe Miller levelled it for the Bison. But Marek Kornak made no mistake for the Telford Tigers, giving them the extra point. The new year brought some good results early on, with the Bison starting January with a 4-3 win over Petersburg and an impressive 7-4 win over Bracknell. 
The rest of January is positive for Basingstoke, winning four of their remaining six games. The Bison weren't going to be beaten easily though, and this well-placed bullet shot from Marcel Patron evened the scores and sent the game into overtime. The Bison's netminder Stephen Wall became the hero of the day as these two saves won the shootout and saw the Bison win 5-4. With good results coming in January, it was looking like Basingstoke could push towards the top of the table with another victory at the start of February. But the inconsistency that has played them through the season haunted them in February. They managed to get four wins, the best being a 3 1 victory over Bracknell, but losses against Slough, Swindon, Guildford, Sheffield, and a disappointing 8 5 loss against Petersburg saw Basingstoke slip to the middle of the table. But the Phantoms weren't finished scoring when Chris Allen got his name on the score sheet. Liam Chong got a consolation goal for the Bison, but that's all it was, when with only 40 seconds to go, the Phantoms rounded off a nightmarish night for the Bison with a final goal, leaving the scores at 5-8. May started the way February ended. Two back-to-back -back losses against Slough and losses to Telford, Guildford and Sheffield saw Basingstoke set in the middle of the table. With minutes left in the game, the Bison subbed their keeper to try and find another goal. But this allowed Luke Brittle to score from inside his own half, closing out the game. They did finish the season on a high with an exciting 4-3 win against local Warriors Guildford in their last home game of the season. Steve Morris stepped up to take the penalty. The Bison only have one more league game before the playoffs and we're hoping for a less dramatic win. Henry Lewin Tip, Winchester News Online. That brings to an end the 2011-2012 season for the Basin State Bison. Come back and join us in September for the 2012-2013 season and all your local news and sports. Goodbye.